I'm Ben Viegas, and we're here today with uh, Rosie Scott and her son talking about water rights and just general farming here in Siskiyou County. I have three topics I want to touch on, which is uh, the historic water rights, such as the dams, uh, Lake Shastina, and the two big ones to our north, and then uh, uh, how Rosie ties into it and what she's doing with the water here in Siskiyou County, and then we'll finish with uh, what's happening in the vistas and how we see it developing and how it's causing trouble for water. So let's talk about, uh, you just mentioned Lake Shastina and this is new information. You said it was a development company that brought it in. The land was sold and the, a development company came and bid the um, North Coast Water Quality Control Board and, and the other, and now I'm going to go blank on its name in Sacramento, Water Quality Control Board, California Water Quality Control Board to dam up um, Sha not Shasta River, but the, the creek that comes out of Edgewood, uh, China Creek, okay. and push it across and make that. Montague Irrigation District stepped in. They put in so many millions on a grant to make that dam. They had a big water park, they sold all the houses around the lake, they put in the golf course, and that was designed to irrigate the 8,600 plus acres of the Montague Irrigation District. Which is in the Shasta Valley, which you're in as well, but you're off of another water supply. I'm off the Shasta River. You're off of the Shasta River because it flows not too far. Right. So, Grenada... Grenada Irrigation District, Hughesman Irrigation District, Shasta River Irrigation District, and numerous privates down this river have rights off the river to irrigate. So Montague does not. Yet, when the town of Montague got in a drought, they put a pump off the river and, and the Nature Conservancy bought Louis Ranch and they said, we're not going to irrigate it, we're going to turn it into a weed pit and we're going to allow the water to go down the river and if the water master says it's a drought and you can't fill your ponds then you can pump off the water district which is kind of not very kosher because the lie is once the water leaves you you don't need it. So um, Montague is faced if you've been out to Lake Shastina their, their China Ditch has no water coming in they have pumped it and diverted it, it's not. You don't remember Lake Shastina anymore? There's no water. Lake Shastina has springs. They used to get the Whitney Creek. They they had the Whitney Creek floods and it would put mud across 97 and and as you can tell by the snowpack, our groundwater is kneeled. And the problem with not having water in your ground is it We've created a man-made drought. Nothing becomes capillary because it just sits up top, evaporates. It, Can I throw something in there? I just recently went to Fresno. Do you remember ever driving through there in the 90s? There was all water plants, lettuce, like all like right. water, cabbage, like lettuce. everything that goes with a bunch of water. And this last time I went through about seven years ago, I noticed that when they put in all the solar fields, there's pomegranate trees, almond trees, orange trees, like all kinds of trees, and they're irrigated in a way where they use less water. They keep the soil temperature down, and it's contributing instead of salinating the water with all the water use. Because every time you put water on it, you get calcium and other minerals sitting on top. There's no water down there. That's why they had to change the crop. In 1980, the Farm Bureau, which is where I work, was fighting to keep our water up north. Okay. They wanted to put a, a um, pipe from the Copco Dam through the Shasta Valley and drop it into the Sacramento River at Densmere. 
That would have been 28 straight miles of pipe is all. And they thought that they could up the flow of the Sacramento River into Shasta Lake and therefore down into the irrigation corral. SOSS, I don't know if you were around, it was Save Our Shasta and Scott Rivers. And, oh, I have seen that. And so they were fighting to stop this, and they got it stopped. And once they got it stopped, then they're like, well, we're going to just pull the dams out. Now, in a time of drought, you would think you would not be pulling dams. You would be adding dams and storing the water. And so if you drive this valley, you can start at Edgewood and drive straight down Old 99 to Hornbrook. And at present, we have lost about 12,000 irrigatable acres from lack of water. That's no alfalfa, no grass hay, fewer cows, fewer dogs. So we're creating our own drought. Not only are we doing that, but we're drying up these wells that have been wells for good be because the ground has no water in it. So shallow wells don't go anywhere. The sad part about agriculture is, yes, I'm a fifth generation here, but it's probably over from my dad in 1990. It's 75 acres, that's all it is. My water bill in 1990 was $763. That was just for power, right? No, that's the water to irrigate the 75 acres. Oh, it all acre. comes on the ditch. Yeah. Okay. Today, my water bill is $6,300. A month? No, for, to for, irrigate. For the year. For the year. Whether I get water, I get less water. I'm not guaranteed water, but that's what my bill is. That and I met other farmers around here you got to wake up at the crack of dawn because it's only flowing so long you get no you don't get to say when the water the water can come in between whenever one you're two three o'clock or you're not that's right and so um we went to that then cattle in 1990 were $1.90 a pound them same way calves right now is a dollar twenty was $40 a tap. That same hay right now is $200 a ton. Fuel was a dollar. That same fuel is $3. If you're lucky. Insurance was $900. It's $3,500. So there's very little you can produce to make this a, a profitable, it's a way of life. You're fighting to save a way of life. And you have to have the outside jobs. You have to have at least one, and some have to have two to keep a, your agriculture hobby sustainable. It used to be a 300 cow hobby, now it's a 50 cow hobby. That's a major job. And so, it, as, as a farmer or a rancher, it really doesn't matter how hard I work on and off the ranch, I will never be able to make enough money to just live off the ranch to make this sustainable with what's going on. And what really, really kills us is where we had all the water we could handle for a hundred years, we're now getting a fourth or less of that water. Or three times the price, four times? That's right. Okay. So it, it, it's, it's hard to, um, we've talked about this. It's, it's like buying hay. There, there's times I'm already looking for hay for next year because the worry is there's not going to be enough hay. Because there are exports to Japan. It gets pelletized and shipped down to Harris Ranches so they can finish off the beef cattle farms or plates. But Harris Ranch is an, is an American It's China. The compost China. They they have their foreign investors. So I did not know that. 
our, 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 our major ranchers in this area have been sold off. They are bought by Fish and Game, Nature Conservancy. They turn them into weed pits. They take the operation off of them. The tax dollars are lost. We still don't have no water. They're talking about pulling dams. They're not, Lake Shastina has nothing. And here we sit. No. No. And to be mean, I'm trying to push it off on you. <laughs> You down to be the sixth generation to farm this land? It's it's gonna be hard because without water, grass don't grow. And without grass, cows don't eat. Yeah. It's a new, new situation for what I'm pretty much being given. So you're gonna have you're gonna work the ranch, and then your wife's gonna pay your way. Yeah, well, I would only do it for that. I'm joking. But no, it's uh, a lot of the teachers at the high school and college of the Siskiyous are actually locals that moved away because they didn't want to be here and inherit land and have to have those jobs because they can't be full-time ranchers. So it's... You just, guys were educated by them. We were. Jana, Jan, Jana Martin, Jana Goyado. Yeah. I, I mean, Mr. Brown, Samson, Mr. Brown, all that. Samson, you guys all went Very through. Very knowledgeable people. <laughs> and it takes that outside income. To provide for a farm. Yeah. And I've seen that. You work for FedEx. <laughs> I work for the USDA FedEx and drive truck. Do you have your class A? Class A TPS. It's got a cover. It's 25, 30 feet deep. It's a hand dug well. In my lifetime, it's never went dry. My mother's 92 up there in the house. Her grandfather, it had never went dry. This year it went dry. That pond behind the house went dry. A pond. You could walk across it in your shoes with no mud. That pond down here was reduced to a puddle. You put water and livestock in it because they'd get stuck in the mud. So, the water, the water level in this ground is gone. Yes, we might shut off the mines. We might get Water Quality Control Board or, or North Coast to step in and get them shut down, or even the IRS. But it will take years for it to rebuild. The water table. The water table to rebuild. It will not rebuild. Last year when they had the big fit throwing and they got them stopped for three days, the water table jumped. 12 inches on the Shasta River meter. 12 inches in a three day stop. That's how much water they're getting out. You have to figure right now that the water trucks they are running are not the 1980 and 90 old trucks with a tub on the back. They are five. They started with now. Now they're all brand new. I see big old uh, internationals now. 5,000 5, gallons a truck. They're 165,000 or close. 120 to 165,000 per a truck. truck. And they help 5,000 gallons at a time. 10 loads a day is pretty easy day. That's Reach. not easy. How many do you think are out there? Well, the other day we had 212. 212 trucks. You realize you have the Shasta Vistas, you've got Perla on one side, you've got Butte Valley, you've got KRCR, you have Coasty, you have Happy Camp. They're now moving over into the Scott Valley area. The only normal growers we got are down Sawyer's Bar and a little bit of the Happy Camp crew. Yeah. And that and uh, Callahan also is strong as well, from what I hear. They're getting overtaken. Are they? They're trying. Because Shasta Vista was the white growers when I was working for Dish. Mm -hmm. That was 08 to 11. And it was... Local. Local? <laughs> Not white. No, the only locals <laughs> out of Shasta Vista were all white disabled people. It's it was true. all retirement communities. Because they couldn't afford it. They can buy a lot in Shasta Vista for $5,000, spend $10,000 to put electricity in a septic, and they were gold. They could put 500 trailers, have their 10 to 20, 30 plants. As a child, if you got busted for 20 plants, that was a huge, huge roll. KRC is the same way. There's just a whole bunch of people in their house scattered out, just have their peace on there. 
see. This one, I don't know if you've heard of this one. I was working for Minks, only lasted there three months, three weeks. Uh, but the time I was there, they were buying to build buildings 20 by 20. And they give me the dimensions and I mention what the code is. 10 by 10, 12 if you're lucky. You know, like you can push it, but don't try them. And they're building half houses out of Meeks. And you know what the county did? They issued a special permit for that region just so they can tax each one of those 20 by 20 homes because they want that money and they weren't getting any money before so it's there's something there but it's not a whole lot because they're only they're living out of tiny homes <laughs> well the sad part of it is our, our drug enforcement task force is like wow we busted this many plants but how many were around it but that was just like three or four of like 600 of them Right. If, that was last year too. I got drone video I'll show you in a minute. And I also have a video of the 200 acre development that popped up overnight. So we'll do that in a minute. But tell us more. We want to sit down and then uh, we can keep... You ready? It doesn't only affect farming. It's affecting all the residentials. It's affecting towns because they were going in and taking water off the city of Wairika. The city of Warwick is going to have a hard time this summer providing water for its customers, for the people that live in town. So they are already cutting off your lawn, they're charging you extra, you get so many hours of water. city of Montague already has problems. Grenada put in a new system, they're already having problems. Yes, it, it affects agriculture, but it affects everybody. And, and you made the point, the point of you have these businesses that are making killings off these people. They're selling them grow dirt, they're selling them little lumber, they're selling them parts, they're selling them irrigation stuff, they're selling them water, and they're making a killing, but the money's not staying in the county. Well, one is, you know, the my buddy works at the Small Business Development Center. The top earner for a small business is May 10. Everything you just mentioned. Gas, propane, and everything you just mentioned. Who owns May 10? The same guy that owns the Lake Chastino one. I know him. His son works there. And where do they live? They live local, don't they? Where I did see them they, all the time. Where did they get the money to buy them? I have no idea. I know they got them cheap. They bought three J's and, Mo and Montague's, so by the same person, too. They're foreign. They're, they're not locals. They got investors. They have foreign investors. Gotcha. Because I believe it. Because May 10th, the whole back section of brand new fri uh, freezers is all mung food. All the food section in May 10th is mostly mung food. Their soups are awesome. I get soups, my son loves them. Like, it brings a little variety, but they are definitely catering to that community out there. That community has taken it over. That it has. They've taken over your church, they've, they're they taking over your school, they've taken over your gas station, and they're gonna come in and they're gonna take over Warika too. Well, they're taking over the water table. Sometimes we get sand in our well. You're taking a shower and you get hit by dirt. Because and how it's sucking up your sand. Well? My, ours is over 200 feet. And so, how long has your family been there? We've been there, Oscar was a baby when that well was put in. That well was put in in 94, like, I mean Oscar was a baby, it might have been so, 93. So, you bought that acreage, you got your house, you put in your well, and people are coming in and not only are they drying you up, they're if your house has no wet water, you're done. Yeah. And the resale value goes down. There's no water. The well is dead. And the sad part of it is there's thousands of greenhouses out there. There's not a permit one on them. They're not oh. legal. They're just, you can't buy lumber anymore. For me to go buy boards to stick in the irrigation ditch, you spend, spend $50 on boards and put brand new boards in my irrigation ditch. To do that this year would cost me almost $250.
Do you blame just the presidency or is it because they hiked up a lot, a lot of things changed? And I I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but it does affect things. I blame the people in our community. Apples to apples and oranges to oranges. When you get conservatives of the environment, it's gonna go up because there's more restriction. So it supply and demand, there's higher demand. I had to wait three weeks to get some fence posts at Tractor Supply. They're eleven dollars, they were cheap, and I kept waiting for three weeks to get a good fence post. Because at Meeks it was twenty two dollars. <laughs> I laugh because I really think our issues have more to do with the people in our community. Our community, you said there's 20,000 new voters. More than that. More than that. We have turned a blind, instead of saying, no, this is wrong, you're not following the rules, and this is going to stop, and the state backing our community and saying, you're right. They've all been fed a bunch of money under the table, and they're just like, we're not doing crap. And so we have opened the gate, we've let the cows escape, we let them mingle with the neighbor's cows, and now we can't figure out why we can't get them regathered. No. The wells that they're getting water out of were ASCS government drilled wells for a certain amount of acreage. And the fact that they have not shut them wells down cap them and allow nobody to pump on them is unbelievable to me. The fact that the IRS, the fact that we're running a million dollars plus a day through our Indian casino and the IRS is not jumping and stopping this is unbelievable. That casino makes a lot of money. Well, the launders a lot of money rather because I see thousands and thousands of dollars black chips going away. The fact that that they've taken our ability to support ourselves and, and they're like, oh, well, we'll just give them, I, 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 we'll just give them a little money here on the side and they're going to be fine. We can take their water because they're going to get an ASCS COVID check and you're going to be fine. But nobody realizes that that money has Somebody has to pay it, and the and the bill is due. I I I don't care who's the president, whether it's a Democrat or Republican. They tend to lose sight of that where their money goes and who pays their wages. I am um, our 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 county board of supervisors, our sheriff department, our CHP. I mean, these are great great people. But every time they've tried to do something, they've been squashed and stopped and, oh, it's racist and, and sued and they never kind of wanted to bury their head because they didn't want to get another lawsuit because they have so many already that they can, they'll never get them. And it's sad because generation families like me we went fishing. We went fishing yesterday. Uh, like water. The no water? Or? There was, I mean, there's a little water, but it's maybe across the whole thing compared to last year when I was there. It was where I was standing at it. It was four feet above my head. Wow. And this is April. And, and, That's when the water comes. and not to laugh at him, I haven't fished with him in years. Fisherman, but we spent four hours in a in a truck looking at our. We drove around Iron Gate and Copco. Here, them lakes look good right now, but they're they're talking. They're trying to pull them dams out. There'll be nothing there. We saw probably 15, 20 wild horses up there. They say there's over 60. That ground cannot produce enough feed them horses are starting to look tough because there's not enough feed up there to feed that many wild horses but the government come in and said oh you guys were making money off them wild horses you can't gather them anymore and you can't use them colts we're just going to let them sit here rot, rot get diseases and die until somebody feels sorry for them. 
So why would it like run home for Haven? Are they protected animals because they're wild horses or how does that work? They can only take so many. They're overrun with what they got. Because there's no wildlife up there in Thai Desert. It's an artificial lake and other than that there's no green area. Right. Other than lawns and I'm sure they're on the lawns. So the sad part of it is we need to be controlling our water. Yeah. We need to be growing. And, and you guys will take this wrong. I'm older and this is my thoughts. We quit raising our kids and we quit respecting our families. Our kids should all be taught to hunt, to fish, to grow their own gardens, how to make their own food, and to work. And too many people stand on the side and say, hand it to me. I don't want to work. I want it to come easy. It's one of the things I respect about you. When my kid goes to college, I'm going to go finish. That is a great statement in my mind. Yeah. I'm and, not ready to leave the county. But, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you're doing something to improve yourself. Yeah. And you're willing to go after it. I hate the people that say, no, I can't, I can't, I can't. Just give it to me for free because I can't do it. My knees are gone. My shoulders are gone. Everybody will tell you I'm up at 6 o'clock, 7 days a week, half the time I'm up in the middle of the night. I work 2 to 3 jobs and this ranch. And for somebody to tell me that it can't be done is very irritating for me. Because you're doing it. Because you can do it, you just have to set your mind. So many people just want everything given to them. And then they think that the government is going to save them. Everybody's waiting. And, and this is what I see happening. And, and this is my prediction. And you can post it for all I care. We're going to have a water war. Because everybody's waiting for the government to step in and save them. And the government's like, I ain't touch that with a 10 foot pole. Water rights are tricky, but they have to be regulated. Otherwise, the water is going to be abused like we see out in Shasta Vista, which is a Hmong community, and we'll use that as a transition for what we're seeing out there now. It's also Chinese. Chinese. And I Mexican. see Mexicans out there. <laughs> yeah. There's Mexicans though. Do you, do you realize that the Indian Casino's board has the same two Mexicans that's on the Redding Casino board that's on the Chico Casino board that's on the Modoc Casino board. These, them guys, that casino didn't get put up here because it was for gambling. It's here to do what exactly what it's doing, and that is to launder money. Sorry. But at least it'll help the tribe help <laughs> because the Karuk tribal housing comes up short. The one in Fort Jones has better medical. And they're literally a subset of each other. But they have different boards, so they have different services. And the Karuk is some of the saddest native rights that I've seen. Like, they, the casino is supposed to help, and it's just creating more trouble but, than anything. Okay, this is a Cherokee, and I know that's not a, a pr common, but. The, sad, the other sad part of it is, is that you have tribal members that are selling the rights for money. It's just like the group that sued the Montague Irrigation District. I didn't hear that one. Who did that? Um, Karooks and Modocs shit Oh, for the salmon rights. I do remember that. Was that the same one? Yeah. Okay. The hilarious, they sued an irrigation district that doesn't have a water right off the Shasta River. Or off the Klamath River. But they still sued them. And they won. They did not win. They got a, a $500,000 settlement. And then the lawyer's fees for another $500,000. And the district had to pay all that. And then they went on to the next district to sue. They went to that they just and they'll sue my district we're just waiting we're just standing in line waiting because you're actually off that river 
No. Or off of the... We're just a water district. So they'll go after you regardless because it's water tribute? They have it because we didn't have enough money. Gotcha. They, they look for districts that have lots of money and then they, they file a claim and they get a settlement and then they go on. The Scott River has done it, the Trinity, the Klamath. I mean, you can just go right up the river. All water roads. And the hilarious part of it is the 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 greens that are doing this, they're all on they they're on ten different groups. So one group sues and then the next group sues and so they keep they take turns. And they keep they keep it's the same lawsuit. We've had the same lawsuits since, since nineteen eighty, just different wording. And they get their settlements and they go on. Well if it works why can't it? And and they get free legal. We pay for all their legal. So, have you ever been to Walmart recently? Yes. I deliver there. There's two kinds of people I have in mind that will always have a full shopping cart, if not two, for two people: the monks and then like the white people that inhabit Wairika, like with children and stuff. They have a lot of food stamp income, so when they shop at Walmart, they don't even bother going to Medford because it all goes to They just shop in town. But I've seen the mugs, and then I want to start a hauling business because I know there's trash out there, and I know they're not paying the trash truck, so I'll go park my dump truck and charge them to move it. <laughs> but there's so much trash. I've been out in Shasta Vista, and I kid you not, it looks as sad as the little village my dad comes from in Mexico. There's people walking in the streets from one place to another. I just, I, the only thing is missing is like a little corner store where you can get something to drink. It's looking like but it seriously toilet. looks like, like just tiny developments, a makeshift greenhouse, and then dilapidated greenhouses, and all they do is pop up another one because it all went bad, so they just move along. Once a property gets busted, it's burnt. They move to the next one. And it just keeps going like that. And then they leave it in ruins. Trash on it. It blows around. There's trash everywhere out there in the vistas now. There's animal abuse cases. There's murder. There's... Tell me, Rosie. Like, you've heard all these, right? 13 murders in a year. 13 murders in a year. I knew you knew. <laughs> in a year. <laughs> When, when, they, when you they, they they tie their hands and shoot them in their head, I don't think you can call that anything. But that's an execution. I would say, but it's not safe out there. It's hard to go in. It's hard to get out. You want to be careful about what you're doing. And it's not that the monks have treated me bad. They have. They have been very polite, very nice. There has been some issues, but not major issues. But as I watch my life getting jerked out from underneath me, and absolutely nothing, it's frustrating. You know, what they have done would be just like me showing up at your house and say, hi, me and my seven relatives figure that you got more money than me and I'm moving in. And you cannot throw me out. That is what happened, because I'll tell you up front, we've been a minority forever. There is now more Hmongs in Siskiyou County than there are Hispanic. So, so this is a video of the shot across from the Shasta Vista. This is a 200 acre development that got subdivided. That's right behind the horse sanctuary. Yes.
this is right across from Chester Vista going up into those hills. And we're not even to the big build of it. Like when we park, we're right in the middle of it. These are the ones that haven't been inhabited yet. The flatland got sold first. So that's fertile. No. Right where Shasta Vista is, it goes straight across and you hang a left once you're in those three gates. Side. All brand new built. Not a permit one. Not a single permit out there. And not only did they subdivide it, they sold it off in like acre to two acre parcels. So every person out there, mother, daughter, son, has one acre now. And they're eligible to vote. They, it, you watch the line. They go from DMV to What's A18 to A18 South Main is your EDT. Oh, gotcha. And and 510 is your where you register to vote. Okay. And all those resources. So. I've seen one Hmong person work at Rite Aid. Other than that, I haven't seen a single Hmong enter the community workforce. They're all out there farming. And they, like you said, as soon as they get land, they qualify for all these benefits of voting and EBT benefits, Medi-Cal, whatever. So they're using all these services that are actually here for retired people. This was a retired community when we moved in in the late 90s, early 2000s. This was all retired people mostly, you remember. And Lake Chastina, retirement community. Everything retirement community. Siskiyou County was all retirement community. That was what Lake Chastina was built on, yeah. was a retirement community. So it's crazy to see how all these services were meant for one group of people, now it was being used by another group of people, and they draw out of it, but they don't pay taxes here because they only have a tiny shack, so they don't have to pay on that. They export their marijuana out of state, so they don't pay taxes on selling it to a dispenser. They don't pay permits to have to grow it with a state permit to grow 100 plants. You're allowed 12 in this county, and how many do they grow each greenhouse? 600, I've heard. 5,000. 5,000 each greenhouse? No, not each greenhouse. I've heard 600 full-grown plants. And it's that might be, but, but that's not how it grows. No, not at all. They because rotate you, it in and out, and they they grow, they, they double can, flower. Those people selling firewood isn't enough firewood to just heat them homes. They're heating the greenhouses, so they get these 300 days of sunshine. I've read the weather charge out there. We get 300 days of sunshine, and it, the only thing hindering you is the cold. So you put a big, fat fireplace in there, you keep those plants warm and the sun keeps hitting them, they grow all year round, I kid you not. Nope, you're right. And they're harvesting. And I laugh because it used to be a few years ago that they would sell live plants. They were, all the little red Lumix buckets, they were stealing them from the dump, buying tractor supply because they were selling live plants on the pallet. They would put three per pallet. And they had to have the sheriff out there. They would deliver them to May 10, get cash for the three on the pellet, and they would leave before they budded. They would raise them right up to harvest. And then you would have to bud them elsewhere for the, the three Because that, that's totally legal. And so then when it... Oh, we, so these are all nurseries. When you notice that the pot's leaving, it's leaving in boxcars. You'll you start seeing. Holy the shit! They're transporting like teen plants, is what you're telling me. I did not know this, Oscar. Have you ever heard of this? Have you? Not I thought seen they were harvesting it all here, so they're probably just growing these and getting 200 for a full-grown plant or something, if not more. They got to be expensive. Look that at is, all the U-Hauls. 
have you not been? I have seen U hauls. All right, you got me right. Like, like I said, you're smarter than me. The Montague one. Look how many more new U hauls are out there. Dude, there's just so many businesses all around. Just they go mean. around the community and count how many Hmong own. Like, there's a massage parlor. There's three, four, or five maybe, like stores, specialty stores for Hmong produce. One in Grenada, two in Montague. Three in town. There's three. I've been to two. Speaking of Grenada, when you want to buy me a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we were just talking about, well, I wanted to mention proposed solutions. So I mentioned that weed in Mount Shasta have always had dispensaries, and uh, Mount Shasta especially, weed more recently. Um, I just saw this afternoon, remember I showed you, Oscar? The... Um, Mount Shasta Police Department got a special grant for almost a million dollars. 800000 800000 And it's from Marijuana Revenue, if I am correct. Did you, you probably know more about this. Tell me, Rosie. That's what I read, is that they got a grant for 800 something and it was for drug. The D.A.R.E. program was a part right. of it. Right. They got 200 of it. So, solutions, like if Wairika got a dispensary, Wairika would get that revenue. And Wairika, in all honesty, with all the empty buildings, could have three or four. It'd be local, you could tax it twice, at the grow site and at the store. And it would create local revenue, but the county says, no, no, no. I'm serious. <laughs> They do have good sandwiches. <laughs> is happening, is happening illegally, or it's not happening at all. And nobody gets revenue, but everybody pays the toll. So why not incorporate it into the community in a way that would benefit the community? Tax them for the water, tax them for everything. Not just like a tax, but just, you know, it has to be something there that limits the water use, something there that limits the exportation of this product from this county to other places. We, we made it so easy to come in and take us over. Not only did we invite them in, we handed them the money to do it. Yeah. Yeah, our government has given minorities and women access funding to start businesses. So every one of them have went in and got a USDA grant or loan. The farmers? No, the mungs. The mungs. That has been one of the big things is that they get USDA money to build with and nobody's monitoring what they're doing. So the tax money is not only paying for them to build that. the door to get into the bank yeah. so now they're in they robbed you blind we're all whining about it but we can't see the solution I don't think you can come in and tax it and get it to happen because we do not have enough enforcement power to stop it Very tough. if if we had enforcement power then wells would be shut dry and they would have to rethink they would go through and they would take out all of them greenhouses. When they busted the pot grows, instead of cutting the plants down, they would take a dozer, push everything on that lot into a pile, and throw a road. Think of the money saved. And instead of wasting your butt to haul your dozer out, move to the next one. Because this game of going, oh, I got a hundred thousand plants, and you got a whole bunch of junk after they've already harvested, really isn't a really good game. Well, it's definitely affected out there. Like, I'd love to go out there and just take a drive with you, one of the down those stretches, have a camera on the dashboard, and just impress you by some of these sites. A lot of these look better nurseries than what they have in Southern Oregon, where it's fully legal. 
I know. And there's I... more of them than in Southern Oregon. There is not a single little village that I've seen in Oregon that looks like that. Oregon, it's all the farmers that wouldn't, didn't want to farm anymore. Didn't want to orchard anymore. The trees were too old, whatever. They turned to marijuana. They're rich now. They're leasing their land out and making a killing. But here it's not happening that way. And if it was a little bit more cohesive instead of this bipartisanship between farm growers and marijuana growers, that it would just be different. But, but it just. But you're talking they about didn't, two different things. There's the a communities difference in between didn't blend. A hemp, hemp grower and a pot grower. They both take just as much water. Yep. But it's two different things. You will, and the other thing that I think is kind of comical is to watch these guys get done harvesting and loading that stuff on these flatbed tracks, tarping them, and taking it to Oregon to hemp. Yeah. It's kind of comical. It's sad, but it's comical. It's happening, though. Yeah. And it's... The, this land is cheap, and it will keep being cheap until there's no more land. Well, that land out there used to be 5000 for 10 acres. Yeah, I remember. Three to 5, I, when I worked for Dish Network, I was thinking about buying a few of them. But and my mom said, there's no water, no electricity. What are you going to do out there? I would have made a killing is what I would have made. <laughs> now it's... it's um, you can't touch it for a hundred thousand. No, there's all these parcels, the ones I mentioned to you. One acre was thirty and I think one point five was fifty. So it's kind of a little bit of a joke. It there is no real solution, but at least we talked about it now and wherever you share it to and it'll be on my YouTube channel, we can at least start a conversation and if anybody wants to speak to me on either side of it, I'll sit down and talk to you as well. Rosie's not the only farmer that's got opinions. <laughs> We're in Siskiyou County, damn it. Yeah, I'm just highly more opinionated. And to be clear, <laughs> half of the county would disagree with my damn it. Ben, be more proper. <laughs> <laughs> we is country and we don't believe in blasphemy. But it's, it's, it's sad. It's sad to watch generation after generation after generation. Just disintegrate. Just disintegrate. It, it is really and, sad. And it's sad to see these families that have made their living in the agriculture world unable to do it even with the outside income. My prayers are for our community, for our kids, for my grandkids, for the people that have lived here, that have made their living here, that have died here, and want something for the children to be a part of. And tell our kids saying about the the metaphor was trying to farm here is like holding a rope that's burning your hand yeah it's it comes to a point to where you're just gonna have to let go if there's no water here I the cows gonna do they're just starving out it's it's gonna be too hard to try to make this run without water water is the biggest thing right and with the prices and everything else climbing, it's getting to a point where you might just have to pack up and go. So you're the one digging out this well right here. If you were at 25, 30 feet, how deep do you think you need to go now? Is that even a feasible well anymore? No. No. We'd have to be anywhere from 150 to 300 feet. So that's no longer a well? No. And that's thousands of dollars that we don't have to do. It's just... It's making it impossible to try to run a ranch here. This ranch should be self-sustainable. We should be able to grow our own hay, fill our own hay barn, raise our own cattle, sell them, pay all our bills, no problem. And yet we gotta work outside jobs, have multiple incomes, just to make this work. And it's, you can only do it for so long before you ask yourself, why are you, why are you doing it? It makes it 
too hard to do this. So going back to your children being self-sufficient, how does it make you feel, Rosie? It breaks my heart. I busted my ass to put away a life that my children can be proud of. That they could come home and have ride their horses, shoot their guns, hunt, fish. They know how to take care of an animal. They know how to make their own food. And to know that they're going to have to use that skill somewhere else because they can't hold on to a way of life. I've worked my butt off for a way of life for my kids to be raised on. And I'm proud of my kids. Like them or hate them, they're hard working sons of bucks. Both of them. They have went through our educational public schoolings. They have higher educations. They've got certificates in places I don't even know you should have certificates. And they go to work every day. They get up every day. Even when they don't have a job, they get up every day and go to work somewhere. There's not a day that you find them in the house watching TV. There's not a day that they just hang out and do absolutely nothing because that's not what they're about. So it's hard for me to watch the next generation and know that I might not have anything for them to step into. Because it all comes down to the water. It's it like, it's like working a job and not getting paid for it. I can go out and I can put 12 hours a day on this ranch, building fence, doing everything else. But there's no money. There's no water. And it's just killing this family. It's killing everybody in this county. And it's getting to a point where... You cannot look down this road from end to end and see a profitable ranch. The dairy is a generation ranch, and they're ready to go under. These people up on the hill are ready to sell. This is a generation family ranch. They're trying to do a party on the meadow and anything that's not agriculture to support it. You go down this road, and you cannot see a ranch that is profitable and making money. If you look all around here, it's all green pasture right now. What's going to happen in four or five years? No water. It's All okay. this green grass will be here. It's, there's going to be nothing left to even farm. So you've got a two to three million dollar water system that you're not going to have any water to put in. What are you going to do? You're paying $15 a pound for meat in the store, and you're getting a dollar twenty a pound for it live. What are you going to do? And I know your thought of let's make marijuana legal, and then everybody's going to profit from that. There is some thought in that, but what will happen is it'll drive the price down, and maybe there'll be a few less growers. But right now, they're so busy, there's so much money, and they're so busy sucking up the natural resources that we have, that they're squeezing everything else out. They're cutting off their nose to spite their face. So that's, I mean, you can only cut your nose off so long before you don't have nothing to breathe with. Exactly. And agriculture is right there. We are just taking another run around the toilet before we actually get a flush. Well, it's like this well right here. This well is dry. Our other well back there has water, but who knows how long. My water to my house is ran through that hose right over there. That's how I get water to my house. And the other well's 200 foot deep. My well's 200 foot deep. But how long is that going to last? People just going to keep drilling deeper wells? Like I said, we get sand in ours every summer. I mean, what happens when we get sand in ours? That's no water for the fields, no water for the animals, no water for anything. Everything just goes away. The number of livestock that's being supported in this county has dropped dramatically because people can't afford to feed them. They don't have water for them. They have no, you know, 
<laughs> they've been kicked out of the forest because of the wolves and the red-legged frogs and the spotted owl and they've been picked kicked off the pasture land, the dry pasture lands because now they're all pot farms and they're kicked off the irrigated pasture lands because there's no water to irrigate so our livestock members are dwindling the money's dwindling and we're just taking a beating that's my thoughts thank you guys I always learn when I speak to you guys, and I appreciate you taking the time out of your day.